What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking, y'all? The results are in from the poll from last week. Took me a little bit longer to get back to this than I would have liked to. I apologize. But now that I'm hearing that all these leaks are coming out for the season awards, I was like, I got to get this out before they announce who the MVP was, right? So I posed a question to you all last week. With the NBA regular season coming to an end, who do you think deserves the MVP for this season? Please vote and share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. We will highlight your response on the video for this poll. And here we are with 172 votes. Thank you, everybody, for voting and participating in the comments as well. Uh, the support has been overwhelming, and I appreciate it. All right, so here's how the breakdown went down with the 172 votes. Giannis Antetokounmpo led the way with 33%. Nikola Jokic came in second with 31%. And third was Joel Embiid with 19%. And fourth, Jason Tatum with 12%. And other, other got 5%. I'm actually curious as to uh, who's, who's, um, what players were thought of when somebody selected other. Curious. Now, before I get into the comments, let's break down the raw and surface numbers of each of these players the four and their record so Giannis Antetokounmpo played 63 games averaged 31.1 points per game a an amazing 11.8 rebounds per game 5.7 assists per game 0.8 steals 0.8 blocks I'm surprised I thought Giannis was at least over a block 55% field goal percentage with a season or with a league best record 58 and 24. All right. Joel Embiid played 66 games, averaged 33.1 points per game. Now, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure he led the league in scoring this year. Don't quote me on that, but I think 10.2 rebounds per game, 4.2 assists per game on 54% shooting. 1.7 blocks, tremendous. One steals, tremendous. For a 54 and 28 record. All right. The Joker, Nikola Jokic, played 69 games this season. Averaged 24.5 points per game. 11.8 rebounds per game. Phenomenal. A blistering 9.8 assists per game. And for a stretch of the season, he was averaging a triple-double. But his uh, production started dipping uh, the last two or three weeks of the season, I kind of noticed. Um, shooting 63% from the field, fantastic. 1.3 steals for the Joker, 0.7 blocks for a record of 53 and 29. All right. Last but certainly not least is the boy Jason Tatum with an astonishing 74 games played. Averaging 30.1 points per game, 8.8 .8 rebounds per game, 4.6 assists per game on 46% field goal percentage, 1.1 steals, 0.7 blocks, and a 57 and 25 record right there behind Giannis in the Bucks. Now, we live in this era, we live in this age today where if somebody shoots 45, 46%, they're deemed inefficient. I vehemently disagree. All right, but anyhow, that's the breakdown. And let's get into the comments. All right. Mark Britton writes, that's a tough one. All four are damn good. And I and mean a lot to their team. Sorry. That's a tough one. All four are damn good and mean a lot to their teams. Well, Mark, you are absolutely right. You ain't said a, you ain't said a single thing wrong. That boy ain't never tell a lie. Mark ain't never tell a lie. And I agree. It's a, it is a tough decision. I wake up in the morning and I almost changed who I think the MVP is. It's, is this, this is going to be one of the closest MVP races um, that I can remember. I really have to think about it. But this one is really close between all four of these players. And I, I wouldn't be mad if the MVP went to any one of them. But I do think that Nikola Jokic did not deserve the MVP last year. So there's this outcry about him. You know, oh, you're really going to give this guy three straight MVPs? 
for three consecutive seasons. I was like, well, see, the problem is he shouldn't have got it last year. <laughs> so we shouldn't be having this discussion, but it is what it is. Thank you, Mark. Uh, appreciate the comment. Exposing casuals. I love that username. <laughs> what a face. Exposing casuals writes and be the MVP this year for show, for show, for show. All right, we got a vote for Joel Embiid. He definitely has a case, like I said, each of these guys do. His his points per game are is astonishing. Very good, actually. I'm not going to say, you know, for, for this era, I mean, nobody else is averaging 33 points per game right now. And it's good to see these bigs, all these big players out here dominating, you know, when everybody's talking about small ball and this is in a big man's league. And though some of these bigs, are hybrids in many ways that can do a lot of different things, very scaled, but they still predominantly thrive in the paint at the end of the day with with those three, not so much Jason Tatum. But yeah, man, Embiid is a is a S tier defensive player. Embiid is a A tier, S tier offensive player. Um he can he can dominate in the paint. He could shoot mid range, fade away, turn around. Right, left hand, baby hook, go to the rim, yam on him, shoot the three ball. Embiid can do a lot, man. Embiid, when he wants to be, can be unstoppable. But my problem with Embiid <clears throat> is that sometimes, man, I just wish he would he would exert himself more and just dominate just more, just more. And the paint, like sometimes I think he settles for jump shots too much. And granted, he can hit them and he has shown to hit them, especially when he gets hot. It's water, I get it, but I would just like to see him dominate in the paint more, considering how much bigger he is than pretty much most of the competition he faces every night. But with that being said, even with my, my knit knacks here against Embiid, I mean, a dude still averaged 30 points per game, 1.7 blocks, banging the steal for over 10 rebounds. I mean, I understand I'm probably nitpicking a bit, you know, but um, I think he could be even more dominant if he wanted to be. Thank you, Exposing Casuals. All right. Next, we have Gaston. Most people aren't even going to look at the season stats. They're just going to pick their favorite player. Then Legacy TV writes, then I vote Giannis. <laughs> He's like, all right, Gaston. No one. Don't I Gaston. I Gaston. All right, anyway. Um... I hope that these, whoever's doing the voting, the panel, the people that have been selected to vote for the MVP, I really hope they really think this over and, you know, look at everything, stats, situations, story, circumstances, context. They need, they need to look at everything, record, look at everything, I test everything. That's what I would do. So, and I hope people aren't there just doing player bias. Like that one year where the Lakers didn't even make the playoffs. Uh, people were actually voting LeBron James MVP or wanted LeBron James MVP. I'm like, what are you talking about? Shit like that. There's no room for shit like that in, in voting for an MVP. Thank you, Gaston. Thank you, Legacy TV. Next up is Samuel Dumas. Giannis has proven time and time both Embiid and Joker teams are not as good as the Bucks. And yes, sometimes Giannis might have a off night, but that's beside the point. All right. You know, Giannis, when you look at Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks compared to the Nuggets, Joker, um, Embiid, Sixers, Giannis has obviously, obviously had the most playoff success, and he's the only one that has a championship and a finals MVP as well. So, yeah, Giannis, at the end of the day, you know if he's healthy, there's going to be a strong chance that he is going to march his way, definitely march his way down to the Eastern Conference Finals and even the NBA Finals. And I think had Chris Middleton been healthy last season i think they would have beat the boston celtics but they put up a value fight with with without without middleton last year 
And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, Middleton is a likes to scorch the the Boston Celtics. I think he's like a Celtics killer or something like that. I could be wrong. I might be thinking of somebody else, but I thought that was Middleton. I'd always light those boys up. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, Giannis is tried and true, and I think the Milwaukee Bucks, if Giannis comes back, we'll see what happens. But if Giannis come, comes back, I think the Milwaukee Bucks will represent the Eastern Conference in the finals. Thank you, Samuel. Next up is my boy A Ram. A Ram. A Ram says Giannis or Embiid. My MVP has to play both sides of the court. Joker doesn't play any D. Randy Candle writes back for a rebuttal. So Magic and AI were both undeserving MVPs. Shots fired. Shots fired. Pew, 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 pew. Um, defense definitely plays a role in it. No question about it. In my opinion, I look at that too. Um, MVP is a bit nuanced and the MVP isn't always the best player in the league. And I definitely consider, uh, defense on when I'm, when I'm talking about both best player in the league and MVP, um, jokers, obviously of the four candidates that we've selected, Joker is obviously the most inferior defensive player. But the, the thing, how I look at it is, um, and, you know, with the rebuttal here that Randy said, uh, if there's a player that's not the best defensively or just, so, or just par for defense, I say, okay, well, what's the other production looking like? If the other production is so much, is so overwhelming and so elite and so amazing, and this guy's impact on the floor, this guy's impact on the team, you know, how he controls momentum, that kind of stuff impacting the game. I look at that too, and if and if it's extremely overwhelming, I can not ignore the fact that this guy isn't the best defensive player. But um, I'll just give him a I'll give him a little a little bit more slack if their other production is 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 that off the off the charts. No, I'm going to say I'm going to let him off the hook for not playing defense. No, no, no. Just It's like, yeah, but he's extremely impactful. And he's doing all this other stuff at an extremely high level. And But yeah, maybe a little bit of slack, but I'm not, I'm not letting you off the leash, right? Because there are players in the history of this league that have been elite offensively, major makes major impacts on, on, on the game, on the score for their team, do all that stuff, and they're elite defensively. And those guys are like in a certain pantheon, right, of the greats. And and yeah, that's that, that's kind of how that's kind of how I look at it. But, you know, I look at Magic Johnson. He was never a great defensive player, but when you look at what Magic did and how he impacted the game and just Magic Johnson, like Magic Johnson being Magic Johnson, his legacy, his career, everything. He's like the only guy I gotta think about it. he's the only guy in my top ten that's really hasn't been known at any point in his career to really play defense. But that's rare to get in my top ten, not being a not not being a um a good defensive player. It's really hard to get in there at, at any point in your career. You gotta show me a little bit of something. But Magic was so damn elite and so damn legendary and so damn good. He was able to get in my top ten, even with even with his um. His defensive woes at times, so it's it's hard for me. It's hard to get in there if you don't play defense. But like I said, when I look at everything, it's like, all right, I I give you a little bit of leeway, brother. Thank you, A Ram. Thank you, Randy Candle. Owen Hussey, what up? Owen says y'all are such casuals. <laughs> MVPs easily Embiid this year. Shots fire, bro. Randy out here. Shots. Owen out here. Shots. Owen said, y'all casuals if you don't pick Embiid. I ain't going that far. I think this is so close, I can't call anybody casual. It ain't like, it ain't like they saying John Morant is the MVP this year or, you know, whoever. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, you know, Julius Randle. Like, maybe a casual might say something. Maybe, maybe. Still casual. <sighs> I hate that word. But I use it sometimes. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I 
I think this is so close, I can't call anybody no damn casual for picking any one of these guys. I can't. I can't, Owen. Owen, I can't. I can't. I can't. All right. That's it for the comments. I appreciate everybody for uh, dropping a comment in. Now, me, what is my pick? Like I said, I go back and forth with this all the time. Very tough, man. It, it is. They, each of these guys are like doing something unique, doing something historic. And I, for the longest, you know, for me, I thought Joker was the clear pick because for a stretch there, they had the best record. And then he started averaging the triple-double. And his numbers are just mind-boggling. You know, even his field goal for 63%, which he should be doing in this league as a big. I think all bigs should be th that high. But for the longest, I had him be. And I was like, I, I mean, for Joker. And I was like, well, if Joker gets that, if he for sure not gets that triple-double as the only big man that ever averaged a triple-double in the league, and Joker might go down as the greatest passing big man of all time, maybe, I was like, it's going to be hard to vote against this guy, man. You might have to just give it up to him. But like I said, they they started losing games a bit. Joker slowed down a bit. His production went down a bit. Maybe that has to do with the more of the emergence of Jamal Murray. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I honestly don't watch a lot of different Nuggets games. So I can't honestly appropriately um, comment on it like I would. But I'm thinking maybe. But this is tough, and. Tatum's there too, and people kind of forgot about Tatum. I feel like in the beginning of the season, Tatum was kind of at the forefront for a bit. And his numbers are great. 38, 4 assists, 46% fit from the field for, you know, shooting guard slash small forward. I think he plays small forward, right? Um, you know, 1.1 steals, almost one block for the second best record in the league. I mean, you can't ignore that. Tatum's balling, man. And he's a wing player. So, I, I feel like it'd be a cop out if I just leave this this video and be like, ah, I'm undecided. <laughs> Shit. Um, don't mind me just sipping on some Crown Royal. Pre gaming, baby. Pre gaming. Um. You know, this is tough. This is tough. I can say that Tatum, for me, Tatum is out. So now I'm looking at Giannis, Embiid, and Joker. And they each have something about it that just really stands out. And it's killing me, man. It's killing me. It's killing me inside. Shout out to Tatum for being the Iron Man playing 74 games as well. Shout out to Jason Tatum. That, that should not go um, unnoticed. Shout out to Tatum. I I'm struggling. I don't I don't know. You know. I might have to give it up to For Embiid, I'm looking at his points and his defense has been stunning. But when I look at Giannis, you know, phenomenal rebounder. The 5.7 assists for the type of player he is is really good. The thing about Giannis, he doesn't have as many blocks and steals, steals as Embiid, but Giannis is a more versatile defensive player because Giannis can legitimately guard all five positions lockdown style in a way Embiid can't, which I love that about Giannis. I mean, you could switch on anything with Giannis and there's, just, there's never going to be a mismatch. Embiid would kind of struggle at times consistently trying to guard small point guards, maybe shooting guards, consistently. I'm sure there's possessions where he can you know, hold the fort down, but consistently. Giannis can consistently guard small quick players with regularity but I'm gonna have to go Giannis Antetokounmpo man Embiid 
Joker. It's so close, man. I I don't know. But I'm going to have to go Giannis, man. With the eye test, the record, the best record, the eye test, the numbers are extremely solid. I I have to go Giannis, man. The dude is a, a freak of nature. He's unstoppable. He did play the least amount of games, 63 games as compared to 66 by Embiid, 69 by Joker. But to be fair, neither one of them breached 70. So what it, it is what it is. But I'm I'm, I'm gonna go. To, I'm gonna have to go Giannis, and you know I'm not even gonna go to the whole. He has more help. He had all three of these guys, even Tatum. All four of these guys have a really good supporting cast. All of them. They have a solid supporting cast. So I, I'm not I'm not even going that route. But I'm gonna have to give it to Giannis, man. From the eye test, what he's able to do, both ends of the floor, completely unstoppable. Going to the rim, obviously not as versatile as in the other three. They can all shoot the ball well. They're more versatile scorers. They're better scorers than Giannis. Yes, they are. But what Giannis can do defensively and still give you over 30 points per game, not being able to shoot, just scoring how he knows how. He's unstoppable driving to the basket. Phenomenal rebounder. Underrated playmaker. I'm going to have to go Giannis Antetokounmpo, man. And I guess I am a casual. Owen, oh, I am a casual as hell. But like I said, whoever wins it, Embiid, Giannis, Tatum. Um, did I say Giannis? Giannis, Joker, Embiid, Tatum. Whoever wins it, I would have no problem with each of these guys getting it this year. You will get no argument from me. Zero. Zilch. None. Again, appreciate everybody for uh, participating in the poll. And um, appreciate the, the overwhelming support. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun hanging out with y'all, talking basketball and all this stuff. So be blessed out there. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.